Hey everyone, what's up? I'm Dustin, a developer here at Treehouse. Today, I want to show you how easy it really is to set up a searching feature for your project or app. Being able to search through your data in an application is a really good feature to implement so that your users can see what they want to see quicker. Implementing this type of functionality may seem really hard and intimidating, but it's actually pretty simple. We just need to write a little bit of JavaScript. In this guide, I'll show you how we can search for a specific author in a web page that hosts many authors. So follow along while I'll show you how. Make sure to check out our teacher's notes or description of this video to get links to helpful resources if you're unfamiliar with JavaScript or need a refresher. You can also find links to our GitHub repo associated with this project, as well as a blog post for a more detailed written version of this guide. So if you're ready, let's get started. If you'd like to follow along in your text editor, make sure to go to our GitHub repo and clone the repository to your machine. Once you're ready to get started, the first thing that we'll do is we'll hop into our scripts folder and we'll set up a brand new JavaScript file. I'll name this app.js. And then I'll hop into my index.html file. And just before the closing body tag, I'll link to that new file that we just created. I'm going to close out of my explore window just to give us a little bit more space. Now, the first thing that we'll want to do is we want to listen for events when we start typing, right? And we can grab the input element from the HTML and notice that it has an ID of author search. So we'll grab that, and in the JavaScript, we can create a variable for this. I'll write const author search, and it'll equal document.getElement by ID, and we'll paste in that ID, which was author search. To listen for events on this search, we can write author search dot add event listener. And the type of event we're listening for is a key up. And we'll take in the event. And inside of this, let's see if we can grab the value from this search box just to see if everything's set up correctly. We can do let current value equal event dot target dot value. And we'll do two lowercase just to make sure that everything in here is lowercase. We can console.log this new variable, current value, and see if it logs in the console. So we'll hit save, and we'll hop into our browser. I'll right-click on the page and click Inspect to open up the console. I'll push it to the bottom of the screen just so that we can still see what's going on. I'll open up the console, and then I'll begin typing in our search box and it looks like the console is logging everything in there. And if we turn on caps lock, we'll notice that everything is still getting logged, but it's in lowercase, which is exactly what we want. So we'll hop back into the code and we can delete this console.log. And next we want to grab something unique from each of these cards. And the easiest thing that I can see is the names. The names are unique on each card. So this will be what we want to search for. If we go into our HTML file, we'll notice that each card has a card header and a card content. And under card content, we'll see that H1 with the author's name. So this is the element that we'll want to grab. And we can do this by writing let authors equal. And we want to grab every iteration of this H1. So we'll do document.query selector all. And we'll do H1 with the class of title. And how we can loop over this is by writing a for each method. So we can do authors dot for each. And for each author, we are going to check that the author text content includes our current value. So we'll write an if statement. And if that is true, we want to show the author card. And if it's false, we want to hide it. So inside of our if statement, we can write if author dot text content and we'll do the dot to lowercase method on this since we're doing that for the current value and we will write dot includes current value and if this is true we will show the author card else we'll hide the author card so the way that we can do that is by writing author dot parent node dot parent node 
And the reason for this is author holds our h1 tag. So if we hop into our HTML file, we'll notice that the parent node of this h1 tag is card content. And the parent node of that is our author card, which is the item that we want to hide or show. So in this case, we'll write author.parentNode.ParentNode.Style.Display. And we want to make sure this one's visible. So we'll write block. And in the else statement, we'll just do the opposite. We'll write author.ParentNode.ParentNode.Style.Display equals none. So let's hit save and let's check the browser to see if this is working. So I'll type in James to see if the first option will show up. James, there we go. All the rest of the authors that don't match James disappear. If I type J-A, Leslie Jacobs will show because her last name starts with J-A. And James Kirby will show because his first name starts with J-A. And if I delete that, all the other authors come back. This is exactly what we want. You may have noticed at the beginning of this overview, each card had a subtle animation when the page loaded as well as when searching for authors. I'll quickly go over how this was done in case this is something you're interested in. This requires just a little bit of CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. So first things first, hop back into the text editor and under styles and under SCSS, you'll see a base partial. Click that and at the bottom of the file, you'll notice a keyframe. And this is that animation. At 0%, we have the opacity set at 0, and we translate the x-axis at negative 100 pixels. And at 100%, we bump the opacity back up to 1, and also translate on the x-axis back to 0 pixels. On line 78, you'll notice this animation is actually commented out, because we actually use this in the JavaScript, because we use a random number for the time delay. We just need to make sure that you add in opacity zero in the author card. So in the JavaScript, what you'll want to do is we we'll want to grab every card. So we can set that up in a variable. We can write const author cards and we'll do equals document dot query selector all and we'll target the class of author card. I'll close my Explorer window so that we can see a little bit better. Now what we'll do is loop over each one of these cards. So we can do author cards dot for each. And for each card, we basically want to set a new random value for the animation delay. So we can do let random any delay. And we'll do math.floor math.random times 500. And we'll do this 500 value because we'll do this in milliseconds. So we can do card.style.animation and we'll write back ticks because we'll interpolate that random value. And we'll just write in the fade in keyframe. It'll be a one second keyframe. And we will do point and then we'll interpolate the value seconds, ease forwards. And inside of those curly braces, we'll write in our variable for our random animation delay. So we'll put random any delay. We'll hit save and when the browser reloads, you should see each card have that keyframe and they all start at different times because their animation delay is different. And their animation delay should go from anywhere from zero to 500 milliseconds. And that's all there is to setting up a quick, subtle animation for the author cards. Awesome work. You should now be able to add a search feature to your projects or apps moving forward. The main thing to remember is that you want to find a unique bit of data tied to the item you're wanting to filter or search through. I hope this guide helped and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, have fun and happy coding.